Hello friends! Welcome to another of our weekly discussions on various PEDs. Last week I discussed boldenone or equipoise and uh, as promised I looked at the comments section and saw that the most requested molecule well actually there was a tie. The, I think it was between Primo and a molecule called dihydroboldenone DHB which has recently become become quite popular. Uh, you know in, 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 in PEDs certain things become popular uh, b mostly because they're new and I decided not to take the dihydroboldenone uh, uh, topic because to be honest I've never used it and as we discussed last week many of these molecules are sparsely researched there's very little I mean if you go to these websites on Google you'll see them claiming androgenic anabolic ratios and things like that but very, it's very questionable where they get this information from dihydroboldenone is very poorly researched so I can't just sit here and make stuff up. I've never used it myself, so I can't really say anything about that. But, uh, and generally I'm gonna try to stay with PEDs that I've used myself and I have some experience with. So instead, we're gonna discuss one of my favorite PEDs, which is Primobolan, also called Methenolone. There are two uh, esters of them. There's an oral version, which is an acetate, and there's an enanthate version, which is injectable. The most famous brand, brand version of it is Bayer which sells the injectable version in amps, which means they come in little glass bottles that you can break open to take the product. By the way, I may look a little bit different today because we're starting our weekly, our um, quarterly week-long fast, and uh, we had a bit of a cheat meal yesterday with a lot of sodium, so I probably look a little bit ridiculous. But anyway, let's get on to uh, the business. So, I want you guys to know there will be a blog post linked in the description below where you can go and find my literature review on Primo Polan, which I did, did just to make sure that I could know whatever else is out there about the, about the molecule before I tell you my own personal experience and how I view its usefulness uh, for bodybuilders or weightlifters in general. But before we get into that, let's do the literature review. I'm just, you can go on the, on the blog post and you'll get all the citations and my notes for each citation. I just have like a sentence telling you what you can get from it. But I'll do that here also, I'll review them briefly, I have my notes in front of me. Um, to begin with, I wanted to make clear, I could not find any, uh, any study showing uh, human recombinant androgen receptor and the binding affinity or efficacy that Primo has for it. So I don't know how people are claiming an anabolic androgenic ratio when they don't even know how androgenic the molecule is. Um, of course, not only do we not have that for the androgen receptor, but we don't have that for the estrogen receptor, for the progesterone receptor, for the mineral corticoid receptors, for the glucocorticoid receptors. So basically, we don't really know what it's doing in humans exactly. Although it has been studied for a long time. And I'll give you some examples of things we can learn from the studies on Primobolan. First of all, and if you watch my videos on uh, liver, just go on my channel, search liver, you'll find a couple of videos, one on liver steatosis, one on liver cancer uh, in, in relation to anabolic androgenic steroids. What you'll find is that a highly androgenic molecule, like for example, trenbolone, will uh, lead to tumor growth in the liver. However, uh, not, just, not just highly androgenic molecules, but also molecules that, that like uh, for example, the orals like Danabol or, uh, or Anadrol that stay in the liver for a long time because of their metabolism. But uh, generally, the more androgenic it is, the more likely it is to cause tumors and things like that. However, if you have a low amount of androgens in your body, you're much more likely to develop what's called fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And fatty liver disease, when you have it long enough, it eventually progresses into a deposition of collagen in the liver called uh, steatosis and then eventually to a scarring of the liver called cirrhosis, <clears throat> which you may have heard of from alcoholics before. So actually that's one of the reasons I think that women are much more likely to develop non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, which by the way is very common in the US. Many people have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I think many of the YouTubers also have it. Generally it's hard to get rid of it unless you fast uh, because uh, basically the body would prefer to get rid of subcutaneous fat instead of visceral fat and organ fat when you're eating frequently. Anyway, there are some studies using uh, um, a Primo on the liver showing that uh, it improved, for example, albumin turnover in cirrhosis and generally showing uh, slightly positive effects of it. 
By the way, throughout this you'll notice basically it seems Primo Bolan is not very androgenic, or at least it doesn't have much efficacy at the androgen receptor. Uh, there's also been studies on human breast cancers, and the reason there is because um, it does not convert to estrogen, and it was thought that it may, just the androgenic nature of it may help prevent the metastasizing or the growth of, uh, of uh, tumors with, with women. Unfortunately, that uh, was not successful. What we do learn from this is that uh, Primo Bolan did virilize women, which means made them more masculine. And we do know, uh, confirmed that it does not convert into estrogen. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't have estrogenic effects, by the way, which it probably doesn't, but just so you know, these molecules are all quite similar. And just from my personal experience looking at uh, brain receptors and how they respond to different molecules, it's very likely that some of these molecules actually directly agonize the estrogen receptor. In the case of Primo, I doubt that. But the other thing that we can learn from these studies on breast cancer patients is that a large number of women developed what's called dyslipidemia, meaning their HDL cholesterol reduced and their LDL cholesterol increased from Primo Bola. So maybe Primo is not as innocuous or benign as many people think. Uh, there's also been many studies. So the main, the main use of androgens other than for uh, HIV patients, historically the main use has been for anemics. And uh, the acetate version has been used uh, on anemics at 20 milligrams, as well as actually there's been higher doses, one to two milligrams per kg of uh, the acetate version. And it's produced what's called cholestatic jaundice. Cholestatus is a kind of liver disease other than cancers and cirrhosis and steatosis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, that path, there's another one called uh, cholestatic disease, which usually uh, seems to happen with pregnant women. It's when the bile ducts get clogged and it's a certain kind of uh, disease that probably a lot of the time tudka and udka are helpful for. Um, anyway, this means that it caused liver issues with these uh, anemics. Uh, in terms of its metabolism, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. You can see in the notes some, some notes of how long, for example, uh, the uh, methanolone uh, can be found in human urine as well as some of its metabolites. It, it's metabolized extensively in the human body. Uh, there are a lot of sulfated versions and there's also, like for example, there's one most common major metabolite which I have written down here. It's a long chemical name, I'm not going to say it, but it could be detected in urine up to five days after a single dose of, I think, the acetate, but I don't recall. I didn't note it down here, but you can check the article. Uh, one very interesting thing. So some of you who take finasteride may notice that you get dry eyes. This is the major side effect that I get personally. Some steroids are very helpful for um, generating tears in the eyes and keeping the eyes moist. So there's actually, I found a, pa a, pa a patent in the US on methanolone as well as nandrolone for the sake of improving uh, dry eyes, which is um, unusual. I suppose they may have some of the effects that the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, um, downstream from the 5-alpha alpha reductase enzyme, there's DHT, but there's also other things that finasteride blocks, and some of them are very important for uh, keeping the eyes moist. In terms of vision, oh, we talked about vision, yes. So erythropoiesis, this is a very interesting thing. So just so for people to know, uh, hematopoiesis is the development of red blood cells in the body. I discussed in the last episode, because we were talking about boldenone, hematopoiesis is uh, in the body, uh, the main driver of it is a molecule called erythropoietin, but there are also other drivers. So one interesting thing that I learned from these studies is that primobolan actually increases hematopoiesis more than testosterone, which is quite uh, instructive. It really tells you that the androgenic nature of the drug is not so much tied to the erythropoiesis, because we can see boldenone does that and primobolone does that more than testosterone. Um, so that's one thing. We also can see that it seems that primobolan is either increasing the number of erythropoietic uh, cells or increasing their sensitivity to erythropoietin. Um, there's also a lot of studies on bone development. Basically, they show that in young rodents, these are on rodents, in young rodents, if it's a, young, if it's a female rodent, taking primobolan can make them, um, um, make them grow taller or bigger. And the reason is probably because it inhibits their own steroidogenesis, meaning it lowers their estrogen levels. And estrogen is the thing that stops women from being able to grow taller, and men as well. But in men, it does the or in male rodents, it does the opposite. It uh, you know so if if a teenager takes primobolan, they'll stop their their uh, growth. However, it's quite interesting to note that the uh, primobolan has an effect 
which is mitogenic, meaning it causes bo like fractured bones to heal more rapidly. And I think testosterone does this as well. Actually, I'm sure it does. They, they both do that. Um, there is a, a study on rodents in which Primobolan failed to increase their muscular structure, but still increased their kidney weights, which is a very bad sign. So just for you guys to understand, the kidney, basically what happens when the kidney is overly stressed is that over time it develops something called glomerulosclerosis. It tries to, it hypertrophies, trying to get bigger. Uh, to deal with the stress, but in doing so it breaks some of its structure and and basically becomes less effective Actually uh, something not many people know is that the kidneys are not just damaged because of high blood pressure or high protein intake Which they are damaged from that and also just a, a larger body weight But androgens specifically damage kidneys in general even normal physiologic levels of androgens so that's why men, for example, are much more likely to develop renal failure, kidney failure at an earlier age than women. And if you take rodents and remove, uh, like if you castrate a rodent, his kidneys will uh, last longer than if he's not castrated. And if you give a female rodent testosterone, their kidneys will fail earlier than if they didn't have testosterone at, at you know, physiologic rodent doses. Um, a final thing, I think we have only one more point, which is a cardiac point. So it's been shown to increase left ventricular hypertrophy in rodents, in pubertal rodents actually, in young rodents. So I don't know how, how useful that really is, but basically what we're learning is that Prima Bolan is not innocuous, it's not completely benign. So I've written some notes of my ideas of how to approach this, how to think about Prima Bolan. First of all, it seems to have uh, an influence on the mineral corticoid receptors that is not causing us to retain more salt and fluid in our body. Generally, you know, from my personal experience, and everyone knows this, Primo doesn't cause you to gain that much water weight, even, even within the muscles. It'll keep your muscles a little fuller, but it, it doesn't, I mean, it's nothing compared to uh, testosterone or DECA or so on. It's also unlikely that it either agonizes the estrogen receptors or increases estrogen. If it did, there would also be a kind of water weight and a kind of fat gain that is different than when the, these receptors are not uh, agonized. Uh, it's are very unlikely. We don't know if it agonizes the progesterone receptor. I also think this is very unlikely. Otherwise, we would see some other effects. Uh, one of the nice things about Primo is it doesn't really seem to have much of an effect on cognition. It, I mean, it certainly probably does, right? Androgenic signaling in the brain is neurotoxic, especially when estrogen is not there. But uh, you, don't, you don't get a mood effect from Primo, usually. So compared to testosterone, testosterone can make you very, it can make you emotional if you have high estrogen, but it can make you aggressive, confident, resilient. And these are some of the nice effects of testosterone. Um, nandrolone has some effects depending on the person. Some people like Ty and Clark will tell you if you're not taking testosterone with it, you get calm and sort of apathetic. If you are taking testosterone with it or estrogen, people tend to get very moody in weird ways. I really don't like that aspect of it. And I think maybe I'll review nandrolone next week. Nandrolone, by the way, so the ones that are really well studied are uh, oxandrolone, oxymethylone, that's anavar and anadrol, as well as most, most prominently nandrolone. So those, when I do those reviews, they'll be much more detailed because there's much more information out there. And I've also used all of them as well. But this one, this one is one of the least detailed ones. But at the end, I'm going to give you guys my opinion. Another thing that's interesting, so I'm saying it doesn't have much of an effect on cognition. Specifically, it does not seem to uh, initiate sympathetic nervous drive. And what that means is your body has two nervous systems, uh, modalities. One is called the parasympathetic nervous system. One is called the sympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is what should be, uh, you know, guiding your body when you're in a resting state. It's also called the feed and, uh, and breed nervous system, or uh, they have other names for it. The sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight nervous system. When you have your sympathetic nervous system on, you, you get immediately stronger because your nerves are fire more efficiently. So, for example, when you take a drug like uh, Anavar, for, yeah, even Anavar. Anavar makes people immediately stronger. And the reason is definitely that. But this is more prominent, for example, with halotestin or, uh, or uh, oxymethylone, where if you take those drugs, you will get within an hour immediately stronger. This also happens with testosterone. If you take testosterone with no ester, either in suspension or in oil, 
uh, 200 milligrams for example, you will get immediately stronger in the gym. And this is because of uh, efficient nerve firing. This does not seem to happen with uh, Primobola, at least not in my experience or anyone else I know. So, so this is a really a big advantage of Primobola because even though the sympathetic nervous drive makes you stronger in the gym, it, I believe, causes a lot of the harm that comes from steroids, other than maybe the kidney effects and stuff like that. Uh, it, it, it is one of the drivers of higher blood pressure when you use steroids. There are other drivers also like fluid retention, salt and mineral retention, but also it actually constricts the blood vessels when you're in that fight or flight um, nervous tone. And more than that, it causes a pro-inflammatory state in the body. So a lot of the inflammatory cytokines that are uh, raised while, while people are on steroids, I think comes from this dominant sympathetic nervous drive. And by the way, if you guys really wanna get a feeling of what that is, uh, if you've ever used Trembolone and can't sleep at night, that's that sympathetic nervous drive. It is pushing you on all the time. You're supposed to be ready to run away from a tiger or to fight in a battle, and you're trying to sleep. So over time, this really causes uh, damage to the body, I believe. And especially for people that are prone to having high inflammatory cytokines naturally, like myself. And I believe this is one of the reasons, for example, many bodybuilders develop colitis, which is an autoimmune disease and other autoimmune diseases because of this high inflammatory cytokines existing for a long time until they start attacking the body. It could also be food, but I think it's partially that. So why would someone use Primobola? Here's the list. First of all, it's dry. What does that mean? That means that you're not going to get a face like mine right now from the salt retention. You're not going to get very bloated immediately from using it. Some people care a lot about that. The other reason is if you've not gotten your glands removed, you will probably not develop gynecomastia from it. You, I mean, you could use a very low dose testosterone if you wanted. And um, if you don't, we'll, we'll get on this topic in a second, but you could use a very low dose testosterone and you could use a gram of, of uh, primobolan and anthate and you're very unlikely to get gynecomastia. More, more significantly, you're very unlikely also to lose hair. So my experience with older clients as well uh, is that when they take Primobolan, they usually don't lose their hair. I have a lot of, uh, well, I have one, one client in particular who was very concerned about his hair and he gets no effects from Primobolan. And he has a, a hair, hair um, what do they call that? Um, hair plugs or like he had a hair transplant. Although actually the hair transplant is not likely to be affected by androgens as much because there are different kinds of hair follicles that are found here. But still, anyway, so he's very concerned about it. He uses Primo, he gets no, uh, no harm from that. It's also unlikely to cause as much prostatic, uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia, which is prostate growth, which is something you really have to be concerned about because the prostate grows in response to androgens. Primo Bolan does not seem to be so androgenic. It must be exerting a lot of its other effects from other receptors, who knows what they are exactly. But it's not that androgenic and it does not to our knowledge, convert into a more androgenic uh, metabolite that's specifically found uh, around the prostate because the prostate, the area has more 5-alpha reductase enzymes, which would convert testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. So for example, if you're taking testosterone, even if you block the conversion to di dihydrotestosterone, you're still going to experience quite a bit of hair loss and prostate enlargement if you're using a high dose because testosterone itself is very androgenic. It's just not nearly as androgenic as dihydrotestosterone which is found, which is produced commonly around the prostate and around the hair. So that's another good reason to use it. Um, now, and the final one is of course that there's probably less inflammation, which is a serious concern. And that's, that's what would attract me to it uh, personally and what did attract me to it. So toward the end of my using PEDs when I was an arm wrestler, I was mostly using Primo Bolan and I was using some pre-workout uh, molecules rarely, like two twice a week or yeah, usually twice a week on very important workouts and then I was using a low dose testosterone so that was probably the last year or so I, I really settled on that I liked it I didn't feel unhealthy from it I felt quite fine so it was it was something that attracted me a lot but at that time I didn't know as much as I do now about the brain especially and also about the health effects so the major drawback is is estrogen estrogen is the reason that um, that we protect our brains First of all, estrogen is an antioxidant, both in the cardi cardiovascular system as well as in the brain. And it readily pa passes into the brain through the blood-brain barrier. But more importantly, it seems to exert a protective effect on the androgen signaling that causes neurotoxicity in the brain. So drugs like Trembolone, for example, probably cause a lot of neurotoxicity in the brain and in the nervous system. 
On the other hand, nandrolone has been shown extensively to do this, but the reason is because it doesn't convert into estrogen. Um, now, this drug may be less, I'm not sure, it may be less, yeah, it is, it is definitely, I think, less androgenic than nandrolone, but it doesn't convert into estrogen either. If you're taking this drug because you want to be dry, and you're, you're not taking anything that converts into estrogen, and you're not taking estrogen itself, you, you know, you're going to probably experience some of the health effects. But again, I, I don't think this is anything similar to experiencing the health effects from long-term strong sympathetic nervous drive, which is much more dangerous. Uh, the final thing I will say about this drug is that if it's not in a buyer amp, like a ampules that are glass, and which, which by the way are also faked, so you can get fake buyer amps, people get uh, ripped off all the time. Uh, usually they'll just be something fake inside, but they could also be testosterone or something else. But if you're getting this from China, and if you're getting raws, either make it yourself or buying it from some guy who makes it in his basement, you're most likely being ripped off. It is the most fake drug. I've never even bought those things. I, I would never do it. I only bought buyer. I only bought from a, a reputed source in a place where it was legal. And I would never ever uh, risk that because it's just not worth it. You don't know what you're putting in your, in your body. Those things could be com contaminated with heavy metals. Those Chinese places, I mean, unfortunately, we all have to use Chinese manufacturing, but it could be contaminated with a bunch of stuff. It may not be the right dose. So it may be Primobolan, but it may be a, uh, like, it could be, I mean, these guys get inventive. It could be like a one-tenth Primobolan, which is very expensive, and then a bunch of testosterone, for example, or something else. So you don't really know what you're getting. You can't test it because you can test to see if it's actually Primo Bolan, but if you want to actually know what exactly is in it, you've got to send it to a lab and you've got to pay quite a bit of money. And then how often are you going to test it, right? Because you don't want to buy a huge amount and then you have to keep buying from the same guy and you're going to have to keep testing it. It's just not worth it. And buyer amps are expensive too. So basically this is a drug for people that have a little bit of money. If you, if you don't have money, this is not the drug for you. But if you do have money and you care about, you know, having an even, an even temperament, um, not experiencing a lot of the side effects, um, even if you're using something that has estrogen. So for example, say you're taking 400 milligrams of testosterone uh, and a gram of Primobolan. This is a great mixture. It really is fantastic for long-term development. You're not going to get immediately stronger, but it, you're going to gain, you know, you're going to get stronger and bigger over time in, in, a, in a chronic sense. Yeah, so basically my, my this is one of my favorite, uh, you know, steroids basically it's one of my favorite steroids i think uh i'll mention some of my other favorite steroids which i'm more ecstatic about this is not the kind of drug you get ecstatic about it's like it's like a drug that you like uh it works well with you it has less side effects um it's you know it's not it feels more benign than it really is apparently from the studies we can see it has a lot of the effects that uh, other androgenic steroids do but uh, it's a nice steroid. So this week I had a positive review. Last week I told you guys that Equipoise sucked. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like me to talk about next. I probably will talk about Nandrolone or, uh, or, or Anavar or uh, Oxymethylone, which is Anadrol. So I'll probably talk about one of those, but I'd like to do something negative next week. So I'll try to do one positive, one negative every week. I hope this helped you guys. And by the way, Probably nobody is gonna get through the whole video to see to see this but last night last week I got some comments like what do you know about this stuff? Uh, you know, you don't know anything Well, first of all, you know, I've been reading about this stuff since literally 2002 I have you know, I was on all the steroid boards much longer than anybody else probably I mean, this is a very very long time and I was a weightlifter I was very strong and I took these things for a long time uh, I was very legitimately strong. I'm not a bodybuilder. I don't even lift weights now. Obviously, I care a lot about my health, but that doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about in terms of these things. So I hope this uh, helps you guys, and I'll see you next week. Let me know what you want to, and, and check out the blog post if you want to see the articles. They're, they may be interesting. They're not that great. I'm going to do a video next on garlic. That's a way better blog post to check out because there's way more citations. Anyway, guys, have a great day, and I'll see you soon.